neighboring Iraq, two American military bases are hit by dozens of airstrikes as Iran responds to the killing of its top general, who was assassinated in a U.S. drone strike last week. However, Tehran says it is not looking for a war with Washington, D.C. All is well. That's how Donald Trump responded to the attacks. Jaid Rana, Jay, Javed, thank you so much for being with us. This is Igor in the studio and Jackie with me, the presenter. So Iran has said it is not seeking an escalation or war. At the same time, it is hitting multiple targets, American targets on the Iraqi soil. It's state media, the only source now, but is reporting dozens of American deaths right now, now with a pinch of salt. But still, is it a proportionate re response in your opinion? Well, going by what Americans are saying, that the, these attacks have happened at the military bases, which were not populated with American soldiers. Uh, Iranians are claiming that there were uh, American soldiers. So we don't know at this particular point of time. But going by the tone of Iranians, going by what Iranian foreign minister said, and going by what President Donald Trump so far has said, that indicates that none of them, neither U.S. nor Iran, they want as further escalation. Now, there was a high rhetoric in Tehran uh, of revenge. They wanted a revenge because General Qasem Soleimani was not an ordinary military general. He was the man who was the actually architect of the entire geostrategic policy of Iran in the Middle East, in Afghanistan. And he's the one who has been organizing these proxies in the entire insurgency against the American interest. Uh, so I think it, what we have seen today going by what Americans are saying, that there is no loss. If that is the case, that means the Iranians are not matching the high rhetoric they have been giving to their, their own people. It seems that Iran doesn't want a military conflict, con, con, conflict with, with the U.S., a direct conflict. Iran's uh, strength lies in insurgency. And I think that is the policy. Sooner or later, they are going to reactivate against Americans in the Middle East and Afghanistan. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because uh, now there is a, a, a high anti-American sentiments in Middle East, particularly in Iraq. So it's going to be very difficult for the Americans to stay there. Uh, Americans have caused a loss of a national hero to the Iranians. And more importantly, I think I would say that Abu Mendi. Uh, he was the man who, who was being propped up by the Iranian as a next prime minister. Iran has lost it. So it's a big loss. So again, the point I'm trying to make is that this uh, attack seems to be not matching with the high rhetoric. Iran should have, and probably they would, perhaps, I'm, I'm not sure, uh, kill a military general of the U.S. That would be a matching response. But nonetheless, Iran's strength lies in actually uh, 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 activating its insurgency, uh, insurgent attacks, and sooner or later you will, will probably see that happening. Of course, it's still important to note that the Pentagon did earlier come out and say that no U.S. forces had been killed in that attack, but that is uh, yet to be seen if that is in fact true. And we'll be seeing if there is a further response from Iran, who says, of course, that this attack was in self-defense. And as we've heard from Donald Trump uh, posting on Twitter, he seems very laid back, saying all is well, but that he'll make a statement later on in the day. What do you think we might hear from him? I think if there are not American casualties, which probably seems to be the case, as what Americans have been claiming, then the Americans seem to be settling down on what has already happened. They will put up with this attack, saying, oh, the military bases were not populated with American soldiers, so there is no loss, and we do not want further escalation. I think they are going to settle down. And uh, we have already heard from Iran, uh, and they have already indicated that they would not go any direct military attack against the, against the Americans. So I, I think there is a bigger picture. And the bigger picture is that now the, uh, the proxies that Iran has in the Middle East, uh, they are going to be far more active inside Iraq. Uh, they are going to target uh, 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 American soldiers in Iraq. And more importantly, I would say that the uh, Iranian proxies in, in Lebanon, they are going to attack uh, Israel. Uh, but it, it is a matter of time. When it happens, the, ship, the policy is going to be changed. Americans are not going to be hugely concentrate, concentrate on, on, on Iraq because this is where uh, uh, there are going to be elections. Uh, soon, uh, not, not that long ago, there are going to be... There are going to be elections in coming months, and you will see that there is a possibility that there may be a pro-Iranian 
prime minister uh, th that these elections may produce. So that would help Iran uh, to create political conditions in Iraq whereby they can force the exit of the Americans from Iraq. And this is happening at a time when Americans are already at, a, at advanced negotiations with the Afghan Taliban. And uh, now I think it is becoming very difficult for Americans to stay in Afghanistan because on one side they are having pressure in, inside Iraq and on the other hand they, they were already having a huge attacks, so many attacks from the Afghan Taliban on their military bases. So I think Americans will have to go for a, a sort of a hasty deal, peace deal with the Afghan Taliban. And if that doesn't happen, that means Iran has its assets inside Afghanistan and they are going to further uh, uh, sponsor Afghan Taliban who will probably hasten their attacks against American soldiers in, in Afghanistan. Javed, I just wanted to focus a little bit more on Donald Trump's response because before, uh, before Iran's retaliation, he was the mother of all hawks, if I may say so. He was promising strikes on 50-plus Iranian targets. He was almost promising, not almost, he was essentially promising, threatening a war crime, mentioning Iranian culture and cultural heritage, hinting that that could become target as well. What we've seen hours ago, it was Trump was a perfect dove. It was like all is well, everything's fine. So what do you make about what do you make about the change of tone? Because it seems to be very stark. Well, Donald Trump is known to be unpredictable, and his critics say that he is a psychopath. Uh, he, he, is, he keep on changing his statements. And I think later on he was briefed that you cannot attack the cultural side. This is a violation of the international law. And now I think he seems to be, politically speaking, ha has come to his senses. He understands the consequences for the American assets, for the American soldiers inside the Middle East, because if there is an open conflict, they may just destroy Iran. But that doesn't mean the Americans are going to be safe uh, elsewhere in the world. Iranians are going to retaliate. So I think they have now realized that there should not be escalation. Escalation does not uh, favor his political agenda because he had won the last elections on the promise that he's going to bring back American soldiers from the Middle East and Afghanistan. And now when there is going to be another election, he cannot start a new war. But going by his rhetoric, I think he's a sort of a kind of a person who's known to be unpredictable. Pentagon doesn't want him to go for a 52 attacks on, on Iranian soil. That is the most unlikely scenario in this situation. But we should not forget another player, and that player is Israel. Israel wants a war. Israel wants the USA to attack, uh, to attack Iran, to annihilate Iran. Uh, that is, I think that is the most dangerous scenario that could develop in, in, in years to come or in months to come, because Israel is not very happy when the Americans say they don't want, want a war. Uh, since Iran has been threatening uh, Israel, Iran has been using proxies against Israel. So therefore, Israel would certainly like a war. It is a kind of country which all the time wants war. Sometimes they've been killing these Palestinians. And so uh, therefore, I think Americans are need to be cautious. And there has been a lot of pressure on President Donald Trump from the Congress, uh, from the Democrats, that uh, the kind of the rhetoric he's been delivering uh, to the Iranians that, ca that can disserve the geostrategic interest of Iran. Well, exactly. As you were saying, Trump is nothing if not unpredictable. And there's been quite a bit of pushback uh, back home in the U.S. And at the same time, you were also saying that you didn't feel that Iran's response was actually an equal response. Do you think that means that out front military conflict is inevitable here? For the time being, I don't feel, foresee an open conflict between Iran and the U.S., uh, but certainly, the, uh, the, uh, the kind of the tension that we are seeing now on the ground, that is a far from over. The tactics of the, uh, this war are going to undergo a lot of changes. Uh, the Iran is going to hugely focus on the political side of this, uh, this tension with, with, with the USA. They are, going, they are going to create more uh, uncertainty in, in Iraq. And they are going to uh, support those political parties and political groups which are already anti-Americans. And they will try to uh, support those political parties which can possibly, foreseeably win elections 
uh, that that means that the sooner or later the Americans will have to leave Iraq. And that is what uh, Iran has been looking for. Iran, they are very clever. Uh, I, let me tell you, they are not going to go for a, uh, big attacks against the, against the Americans. They know the, they cannot match with the Americans' military machine. But certainly, uh, they will do what they are. They are very. Ex they are very expert of, and that is. There are two things. On political side, they are going to support these political parties. Something I early on. I early on explained, and then very importantly that there are going to be more insurgent attacks against the American soldiers, against the American commercial interest, against the American diplomatic interest. Maybe American diplomatic installations, diplomatic missions may come under attack from the proxies. There may be more violent uh, uh, protest against the American uh, uh, diplomatic presence in Pakistan, in the Middle East, and elsewhere in the world, particularly in those countries where Shia communities have their presence or they can use their proxies. So the, the, the tactics of the war are going to, going to undergo changes uh, because Iran would certainly like to uh, do what they are, where they have their expertise. They don't want an open conflict, though the kind of the rhetoric, the high rhetoric that we have seen from Tehran, that there are going to be dead bodies of the American soldiers lying on the streets in the Middle East. Uh, that I don't foresee that happening. They have claimed that there are dozens of uh, so, uh, American soldiers who might have been killed, but I, I don't know at this particular point of time uh, if that has at all happened. Either Americans may be uh, simply concealing their casualties or, uh, the, or it may be simply a political rhetoric that we have seen from, from Tehran. But I, I foresee that the shape of this war is going to undergo, undergo changes. And we must not forget uh, a, a recent report by uh, Israeli television, which said there was a secret memorandum, memorandum which was signed between the US and uh, Israel. And under, if you go through that secret memorandum going by this report, that suggests that the Israelis, they are going to share intelligence to the Americans about the locations of the uh, Iranian interest in the, in the Middle East, particularly in, in, in Iraq. That, that underlines that Israel is a very, very active player. And we should not also uh, forget the other side of the picture, which is that Israel would probably like the involvement of Saudi Arabia in this conflict, which means there will be a sort of uh, infighting between Muslims uh, on sectarian grounds. That will be the most dangerous scenario which may develop. And Iran probably at this particular point of time doesn't want that to happen because if Iran keep on attacking through its proxies or directly against Americans, that means more public support from the Muslims across all sects. And if there is an attack on Saudi Arabia, that means that support is going to be divided. Uh, and I don't foresee that happening uh, in, in coming weeks, but certainly that kind of situation can develop in the, in the distant future. Javed, um, Donald Trump, he didn't warn any of uh, American allies of the strike on Qasem Soleimani. Uh, not even regional allies like the ones that you have mentioned, for instance, Saudi Arabia, Israel, and so on and so forth. So um, Trump's unpredictability, which you've talked so much about, it is now essentially somewhat backfiring at America's allies in the region because now we have Iran openly threatening those allies, saying that, well, if you provide provide any help if you help um, the, America, the Americans in any way to strike the to strike us to strike Iran then we will target your facilities as well so I want your opinion on how do you think this whole uh, this whole conflict will affect America's Washington's relations with its regional allies in the Middle East because I see at least two ways here one is that they will see a more in the in America its regional allies will see a more unreliable partner, which doesn't keep them, them in the loop. And on the other hand, you could see other countries and uh, allies brought closer together in the face of a common enemy. So what do you think it will be? Well, so far, Israel is quite happy because uh, the killing of Qasem Soleimani is not something ordinary. It is a big event because he was a national hero. And uh, uh, then the killing of... Uh, then uh, their proxy leader in, in Iraq, the man who was being propped up as the next prime minister, 
I think is um, the what we have seen there. Nathan Yahoo has said that the this was a very decisive action, very forceful action, and he sounded very happy. Now, uh, the <laughs> now Americans cannot start a direct war unnecessarily because just because it is uh, the desire of the Israel. But so far. Uh, President Donald Trump has keenly listened to the Israeli demands when it comes to the Golan Heights. They have recognized it. It was a disputed territory. They have recognized Jerusalem as the capital of the Israel, something no American president could have could have thought of. So gradually, the uh, President Donald Trump has been complying with the agenda of the Israel. Uh, now, going for an open war is uh, something big. But there is also there are also landmines. You know that after this uh, assassination of Qasem Soleimani, oh, uh, the yes. Iranians have said that they are no uh, going. They are not going to comply with the this nuclear deal of 2015, which uh, which unilaterally was revoked by the Americans. So I think now uh, Iranians are feeling that they need to manufacture nuclear bomb, and. Uh, and morally, they, they can do it because the Americans have revoked that, that deal. Europeans are not there. They are, they've been making a lot of statements. They don't want uh, Tehran to go out of this nuclear deal. But at the same time, they are not ready to take on the Americans. So if, if, um, if Iranians will go for a nu uh, nuclear bomb, which probably they would go, then the Saudi Arabs will certainly go for it. Uh, that, that means the shape of the, this conflict is going to be changed. And if Iranians are going to make a nuclear bomb, which probably they would do, uh, that means the, then the Americans will have to take the decision. And more importantly, we have already seen in the, uh, that the Israel has, has bombed the nuclear facilities of the Iraq when Saddam Hussein was there. So we can expect that the, if not uh, the U.S., then the Israel would certainly attack Iran. But my understanding of the situation is that the Israeli would prefer to use the military muscle of the Americans to attack Iran. Israel doesn't want to attack Iran directly because of its consequences. So let's see how things unfold. But certainly in, in months to come, in weeks to come, the shape of this conflict, the shape of this war is going to undergo a undergo lot of changes. And uh, Americans probably will have to leave this Middle East and Afghanistan. There is a partly because of there is rising anti-American sentiments in the Middle East, uh, particularly from the Shia, uh, Shia communities in Iraq, in, uh, in, uh, in Iran. And also very importantly, that there is already uh, anti-American sentiments in other parts uh, of, of, of Asia, South Asia, in Afghanistan, in Pakistan. And uh, Americans are already finalizing deal with Afghan Taliban. And now they will have to go for a hasty deal. As we speak, Afghan Taliban are divided. One group wants a graceful, wants to give Americans a graceful exit. The other group wants to give Americans a disgraceful exit, which means when they are negotiating with the Americans, at the same time, they're attacking their military bases. That reflects the how um, miserable, miserable conditions Americans have been going through in this region. And with the assassination of Qasem Soleimani, they have simply worsened the situation to their own disadvantage. Political analyst Javed Rana, thank you for your time and your comments.